celebrated this retreat under, under the theme transformation through resilience and reinvention. This event was put together as an attempt to get to understand and bring everybody on board and to make changes that will be beneficial to the entire faculty and staff in the long run. And with that, we, we hope that everybody will be motivated and encouraged to, to make the changes that we need to get in also accreditation. So it is like a health check um, for the entire faculty and staff. And for us to move unisonly and that will put us apart from all other competition. And so we believe that it was important for us to stop, listen, check the status of where faculty and staff are in terms of understanding of what our culture um, is and then put some new strategy and some new traits in place and then move toward accomplishing and achieving those traits that will get us to where we want to go. Sometimes we tend to work in separate camps and we might lose the larger picture in the process. These initiatives help to come together to see how we work together, interconnecting to strengthen the university and to make it a better place. Today we were able to show that we can work as a team and from here onwards we are going to continue along that line as we transform our national university and move forward. Understanding how we feel, being able to, to manage that feeling smartly, it will enhance the, the, the quality of service that we offer to all our stakeholders. So it's very important that we understand our feel, even how we relate to our fellow colleagues on campus, how we relate to our students. I think it's very important for us to have a clear understanding of emotional intelligence. And um, if we do that, like I said, it improve our, our overall service. It can also put us apart in, in terms of what is it that we want to deliver at the end of the day. And, and it will create the culture that we want, which is a, a, a culture of positivity as a member of the Faculty of Education and Arts, I must say that this has been a wonderful experience at our first annual faculty retreat that has been an initiative to generate community, to build us as a faculty, to build us as a university and to understand how we are connected to the wider family of the university. We ended on a very, very high note with the team building exercise where we were placed in teams. And in that team, we had to work together to prepare uh, a meal, you know, in a, in a cook-off competition. And uh, for me, what I saw in that exercise is exactly what I believe we are going to do when it comes to realizing the, the vision of the team for today in terms of team building and working together as one UB and during that exercise we were able to come together prepare the food together everyone contributed we ensured that we had very little or very few individuals on the sideline everybody got involved in accomplishing this one common objective of preparing this tasty, tasty meal that we were able to work together. And that is the whole importance behind team building. The University of Belize is made up of a, a, a diverse set of individuals. And in any organization, that diversity can be used as a major, major strength. And that is what we did here today in this team building exercise. Now, in our everyday work, that is exactly what we are going to do now, moving onwards, whereby we are going to bring the collective efforts of everyone together to advance the cause of this our national university. The government and people of Belize are looking at our national university. They are eager to see in what direction we are going and they are also very eager to support. So I am 
more than thrilled to have this opportunity to be a part of this process and I welcome other initiatives such as this as we continue to work on building this institution. When you think about UB, you think about innovation. When you think about UB, you think about security. When you think about UB, you think about a place that is rewarding, a place that there is a future in it for, for everybody. If you're a student, there's a future here at UB for you. If you're an employee, there's a future here at the university for you. So we want to create that culture, but in order for us to create that culture, we have to introduce everybody to the concept of emotional intelligence so we can fully understand and how we relate to all our stakeholders and to everybody the takeaway from this session is that we can apply whatever we learned today whatever we, we were introduced to today we can build on it it's just an introduction it's something that you have to practice continuously and as you practice it you become a little bit better so um, i'm excited about that i'm excited about that Welcome to Jaguar Journeys, a video podcast series aimed at documenting the stories of our journey as Belize's national university. From enriching interviews with faculty and guest experts to even hearing from our students on life as a black Jaguar. We're hoping to establish and maintain connections with our current students and even those who are thinking about where am I going to go for tertiary education? And so we've done a lot of behind the scenes work, but guess what? The University of Belize is here. And so I'm so excited. Thank you guys for being with us. You guys will be the first show that we actually get to air. So welcome, let's start the conversation uh, with a little introduction. Yes, Ms. Ima, really. It's a wonderful feeling. I feel overjoyed right now to be a part of this historical event. I mean, it's happening. You know, the discussions took place and now you have run with it and we are here just live and direct. So I feel good about it. It's a wonderful feeling. Um, hello everyone. My name is Camilla Barker and I'm the admissions coordinator here at the University of Belize. And I'm just happy to be with all of you right now. Peter Kenny, I'm a proud Black Jaguar and a member of the admissions team. I work alongside Mrs. Barker and two others. Shout out Mike and Delia. <laughs> Four of us uh, work together to ensure that the admissions office is up and running. It is the gateway for students leaving high school or another tertiary institution into University of Belize. So we're the first faces you see. That's a good starting point, ladies. Let's talk about the office and the services that you guys provide. Yes, so as Faye just mentioned, yes, we are the gateway to the University of Belize. Admissions, our office and um, services. The Office of Admissions is really responsible for attracting, uh, recruiting, enrolling students. Um, students who have, uh, students who have strong um, a strong capabilities, a strong desire to learn, to be prepared for the world of work. Students who have um, an interest in, in, in research, in development, in um, preparing to make an indelible mark in society. I mean, once you have that ambition, have that passion, that drive, then it is our responsibility to reach out to you, of course, to attract you and to get you on the right track to applying and enrolling with us at the University of Belize. There are students who might be out there listening, their parents who really are undecided. They really don't know, you know, what path they would want to take. Does you be welcome to students as well? Do have those persons who know exactly, you know, what their profession, what their career field or goal, their, their path, charting rather, charting their career, pathway and so they know what they're they're about they know what they want to become but you have others you know who are 
late bloomers, as they would say, you know, who ha haven't made a decision as yet. They are still in that valley of decision and, you know, finding their way around, you know. So we do cater to those persons, both group. If you know exactly what you want to get into, you can apply directly for your major. But on the other hand, if you are not so sure, then you would um, join what we call our undeclared major. And that was created for persons who are deliberating. So with your undeclared major, of course, you know, you would be taking your general education courses. We call them GECs. And so you take a number of courses. We give you one year to make up your mind, to think about it, to feel out the university, see what university life is all about and what higher education is about. And you get one year to study in that major. I mean, if you make up your mind within one semester, you have the liberty to join a program. You do what we call a program change and you move over into your program. But if it takes you an entire year, that's okay. And then all those credits that you complete as your GECs, they all transfer with you when you join your major. So it's, it's not a general studies program. You're not just taking, you know, general arbitrary courses. And when you're finished, you can't really transfer into a particular major. But when you're done with this undeclared major, it actually takes you somewhere. And we have different statuses here at university. And that's why we offer various services through admissions. You have a wide array of persons. You have persons who would fall into the category of new students, those who are coming in from high school. You have transfer students that we cater to as well, those who are transferring from junior college into our programs. And then you have those per persons who are considering um, continuing education, you know. And so it's a wide mix of persons, and that is why we have to cater to each individual accordingly. Also, it's very good at this time to talk about our non-discriminatory policy that we have here at the university, where we do not discriminate against anyone, against sex, against gender, against um, persons with special needs, special abilities, and so forth. We have had students who have fallen into um, one of these categories, and so we had to tailor how we teach to really cater to these persons with their unique abilities. So we offer a variety of service when it comes on to our academic offerings and how we categorize each students and how we teach and cater to each with their different needs as they come to the university. One of the most frustrating processes in life is trying to get into a tertiary institution. And it's one that's filled with anxieties and yes. frustration. And so it's important for us to talk about that just a little bit. What is the process involved in applying to the University of Belize? Uh, well, we do these recruitment that I want to speak about. We do these recruitment seminars where we explain these things to the Fort Farmers of all secondary institutions and as well as uh, students from junior colleges who would like to further into their bachelors at some institution, which we hope it's at UB. Um, we do these and we explain the application process to them. The first thing you need to do is to complete the application form. We have an online application open and we have the hard copy applications. You can do either or. Uh, you choose one. Uh, some students, they do both, um, but they only require <laughs> to one. To do one. Yes. So along with the application, where you put your personal information in, you put your, um, if you have any medical issues, if you have any. Okay, but where do they, where can they access this form? The application, mm -hmm. uh, at, on our website, ub.edu.bz, uh, there's a, but you can navigate the site, but there's an apply now cool. segment where you can find the online application and the, the downloadable hard copy. All right. Okay. Now, um, when you complete the form, you can either submit it hard copy with two recommendation forms, recommendation letters. You can get these from your lecturers if you're working from your supervisor or from a justice of the peace or from a leader of the church. Um, so along with this, you also need the transcript. For Fort Farmers, uh, as soon as you get your first semester grade, you can go apply for a transcript from your institution and you bring the hard copy sealed. Do not open <laughs> that envelope. A lot of students open it and we can't accept that envelope oh, once wow. the seal is broken. We can't accept that transcript. That's important. Sorry. Yes, very important. So keep the, um, keep the transcript in a sealed envelope, bring it to us. 
Uh, you, the school can also email the transcript to etranscripts, with an S, at ub.edu.bz. Uh, same thing goes with the recommendations. The recommenders could email the recommendation letters or forms to us at you e transcripts at uv that edu that bz sorry <laughs> yes so um and all along with those you also need to have a certified copy of your birth certificate or passport certified copy of your social security card and a passport size photograph of yourself by certified copy i mean that a jp has to stamp and sign the copy of the social security card and the birth paper or certif birth paper or passport uh, if you don't have the copy signed, then you bring the original when you're submitting the documents in person to any of our offices. You bring the, heart, the original and the copy, and we can stamp it and certify it there. Now, if you bring the copy with no original, then we don't know if it's authentic, and we right. cannot sign it and stamp it there. So we won't be able to accept that those documents. Mm -hmm. Now, along with this, you also need $30 application processing fee. So that's good to know what the process involves for our fort farmers. But yeah. what about those people who might not necessarily be coming from high school? I mean, oftentimes you hear, you know, people within the government sector uh, wanting to update and advance their, their skills or what. How does that process work? It's the same process. Um, just to break it down probably a little bit more, um, whether you are a new student coming in from high school or a transfer student or uh, someone who is seeking to further your education, you would all complete the application process that Faith spoke about, you know, earlier. You you submit your application to us, submit your documents and so forth, so we can do that necessary review and respond to you in a timely matter, manner. I'm sorry. Um, you do have students who we call returning students, those people who have started the programs and for some reason or the other, they withdrew for some time and um, those persons would come back to us on a readmission. We say readmissions or readmitted for whichever semester they choose. That process is a little bit different. Um, a, a person who is new and coming in fresh and you know, just coming to us and what of you, you will have several um, paperworks to complete and so forth. But for a returning student, then you would submit basically your just an application form because you are you were in the system before, so you don't have to go through all the process that Faye mentioned earlier, you know. So for returning students, it's a little bit different. You don't have all those supporting documents to submit. Um, for international students, the process to is a little bit different from a local student who is applying for admission. So that's another category of students. If um, you're applying um, as an international student, then you have to submit things like your credential evaluation report. If you're coming from a country where English is not your first language, then you have to support, you know, evidence of your ability and competence, you know, in the language and so. So different categories have, um, yeah, have different um, requirements. So while it's similar for new and transferring students, when it comes down to returning students, international students, the process is a little bit different. And we also have a mature entry admissions here too for persons who are experts in their fields. They have been working for years. They are professionals, but they don't have that qualification, you know. And so we have that mature entry clause where we have a special type of admissions for you. You have to go through an interview process. You have to be in your field for a certain number of years. And so you don't have the traditional um, academic requirements, but you have the experience and experts in your field. So that too is another um, thing that we do here in the admissions office, evaluating applicants based on their own merit. So that's a little bit of that there, Eva. In the event that there might be maybe a missing document or an unsigned document, what is the, the process involved in that? How active are you guys in saying, reaching out? I mean, I'm thinking about it and it's a lot. Yes. How do you handle all of that? That, that? That's a bit overwhelming for me. It is, uh, but... 
if you are submitting your application online, uh, we can we can we go and we check if we, uh, the documents you submitted are certified, especially like the social security card and the passport or birth certificate. If those are not certified, we email you immediately, telling you uh, this is this is what you have pending. Uh, you have payment <coughs> pending. You have this missing, uh, or this is not certified. Um, all that. So yeah. Um, if you're submitting your application hard copy to any of our campuses in Belize, Belampan, or Punta Gorda, then we check it right there on the spot and we make you know, okay, this is missing or this is uncertified. You can email it to admissions at ub.edu.bz. We uh, let you know right there, right then and there. Good things, good things. For such a small That's office, you guys, team, it's yes. it's incredible. The efficiency. Team. I was with you guys, when was it? For the uh, the recruitment drive out right. in San Pedro right. and Kikaka. Right. Right. Absolutely amazing experience. Mm -hmm. Interacting with students yes. and being able to be on that platform right. to sell the university right. as the number one university mm -hmm. of exactly. choice. And I'm so happy that there is still that sense of enthusiasm and yes. excitement coming yes. from our yes. farmers. But guys, let's just stick it right there for a minute. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back to talk more about the University of Belize. Nestled in the green ecological belt surrounding Belmopan City lies the central campus of your national university. The University of Belize offers more than 50 associate and bachelor degrees to over 5,000 students of all ages from every corner of Belize and around the globe. Awaiting you is an exciting adventure of interactive learning experiences at home, in classrooms, and natural laboratories across Belize and the region. Come prepared to broaden your horizons and revel in international competitions, game-changing technological innovations, outstanding varsity sports, and professional wellness programs. Rest assured that you will learn from the brightest minds in Belize and in the most enabling environments as you open doors for your personal and professional advancement after graduation. As a new UB Jaguar, you are joining the ranks of Senior Councils in the Belize Bar, Master Entrepreneurs, Award-winning Researchers, Professional Athletes, and Leaders of Education in our country. For you, it all starts with a glimpse of the inspiring and transformative road that lies ahead. I've learned to have fun overcoming the challenges on the field and in the classroom. Here at the University of Belize, I'm being pushed to think outside of my comfort zone, and I love it. I am grateful for the lifelong friendships that I've made here at the University of Belize. I am happy with all the support that I get. In the words of our illustrious president, you form the core of what we do and what we accomplish. For your decision to join us on this path, we say congratulations and welcome. Welcome. Bienvenidos. Okay. Bye. Echabo. This is your national university. Welcome to the UB family. And welcome back to Jaguar Journeys. In case you guys are just tuning in, this is the, the biggest thing to hit Belize. <laughs> Coming to you from the University of Belize. So tonight we're talking about getting into the university. We heard a little bit from Faye about the application process. But I just think it's important also to talk about what if I miss that application deadline? What happens to me then? Well, there are two deadlines at this point. Uh, for those interested in applying for the faculty programs under the Faculty of Health Sciences, the pharmacy, the med lab, nursing, the social work, that deadline is March 31st. And I just want to mention something else. Uh, for anyone, any program, for anyone who is interested in applying for any program, if you apply by March 31st, you enter our tuition discount promotion that we're doing so 
big <laughs> big things what, are happening. What kind of so what kind of discount are we talking about here? A significant discount, one. Discount. All right, guys. So yeah. there you go. I mean, any discount yes, right, right, right about it. now is a good yeah. one. So all you need to do, submit your application by March 31st and you enter to win. You either at an associate's level or a bachelor's level. Um so that is that deadline for Faculty of Health Science. Uh, for every other program in any other faculty, the deadline is May, the last Friday in May, May 24th. Now, we do encourage you to submit your application by May 24th, but if you do have some sort of a hiccup and you uh, need to submit a late application, application we do accept uh, late applications, no late fees. I think one of the, 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 the center of the conversation definitely has to be to talk about what the program offerings are. You know, what, what's going on at UB? We have anything new and exciting on board? Even before we start, you know, outlining our program offerings, um, just want to make a correction there that the final call is actually May 26th, the last Friday in May, all right? Not May 24th, as Faye mentioned earlier. So I just wanted to clarify that part. Now, as you talk about program offerings, now that's a mouthful. Um, let me first advise our listeners that if you want to see the whole listing of UB's programs that we offer, you can always hop on to our website at www.ub.edu.bz and you go to our admissions page and you look at the program offering. So you'll find everything there. You'll get synopsis of the program descriptions and requirements and so forth. But just to touch base on a few of them, um, we do offer a wide range of disciplines from the social sciences um, to arts and education. We have science programs, technology. We have the health sciences as well. And so there are several programs. Um, I want to zero in on our business program, associating business. If students are thinking any career in the business field, you want to join UB's associate in business science because that provides you with the foundation to springboard into any major, be it accounting, be it hospitality, tourism, be it um, management, business administration with majors in entrepreneurship or the public sector management program that we offer. So a wide range of programs come from the Faculty of Management and Social Sciences. Um, I don't want to forget the new programs that are coming under that faculty as well which is our associate in criminal justice and criminology. You know, law, yes, big on that. And that's coming for August 2023. So you can feel free to apply for our associate in criminology, um, criminal justice, criminology. And we also will be offering that at the bachelor's level. So as soon as you finish your two years associate, you can hop over into your bachelor's in that area and then you can of course launch out into law school and you know the whole works go so UB is now offering that springboard for persons who want that career in law um, legal studies and so forth um, we also have the health sciences uh, faculty and that caters to the whole the whole being the holistic person if you're thinking about mental health that's the faculty because it has the bachelor's in social work. You know, if you're thinking about um, uh, career in nursing, that's the faculty. We have the bachelor's of science in nursing, a four-year program. If you're thinking about pharmacists, you want to become a pharmacist, we have a bachelor's as well of pharmacy there. We have the bachelor's in medical laboratory science. So that faculty caters to the whole person you know you go to the doctor so UB is going to start training doctors now right so you go to the doctor we have the MBBS program coming up soon in August as well um, who helps the doctor the nurses so we have the nurses uh, when you get that prescription now you need to go over to the pharmacy so UB produces the pharmacy as well you need to do the blood works to help the doctor to make good 
you know, informed decisions. So we have the people who work in the labs, the medical laboratory scientists. And then when you hear all of these things that are happening in your body, you get overwhelmed, you're saddened, you don't know how to deal with the, the repercussions of all this. You need to talk to the counselor. And so UB offers the mental health program there, the social work program, right? So when I say that faculty caters to the holistic man and woman, that is what we are talking about. We are training doctors, their nurses, their pharmacists, their medical laboratories, scientists, and their social workers. And that faculty has a special deadline. It's March 31st for that one. So make sure you apply early for that faculty, right? And um, so that's two faculties we talk about already. We also have the faculty of education and arts. And I know Miss Eva has some bias towards that faculty, right? And that's the faculty that trains the teachers, people who want to teach, people who want to go into journalism, you know, people who want to go into history and, and law too, of course. And that faculty offers the associate in English and primary education and early childhood education and all those lovely subjects, a bachelor's in history as well for persons who are thinking about maintaining Belize's rich culture and heritage and history and so forth, that program would be for you. And we also have the bachelor's in Spanish education. So if you're thinking about teaching that language, you want to be a Spanish teacher, we have a four-year bachelor's in Spanish ed for you. And then we have the largest faculty that offers the most number of programs, which is the Faculty of Science and Technology. You know, that is the faculty that has the um, associate in IT, um, biology and chemistry, um, architecture, engineering, and all those lovely programs to develop your mind and your critical thinking skills and your analytical skills. You have the associate in agriculture and we have that at bachelor's levels too. We also have the associate in natural resource management. Miss Ima, it's too much. It's a mouthful. You know, we have the bachelor's in marine biology for persons who love the aquatic world and you want to study and preserve that world, you know, for future generations, of course. You know, so there is a wide array of programs offered here. As I said, you can hop onto the website or feel free to touch base with us if you are thinking about a particular um, career and you're not sure how that aligns with a program here at UB. Hit us up on WhatsApp, 635-9804. Send us a WhatsApp message and we'll tell you how that aligns with our offerings here at the university. What I love about it is that the effort and the, the strategic planning involved in getting these courses together because there are relevant areas for national development. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. They are designed to meet the needs of the country. Exactly. Right. And so I think it's important that's to say, listen, yeah. This is what the future is looking like. Right, right. These are the areas that you would want right. to think about. And guess what? We're offering those right. here. Exactly. And it shows that we don't just pull programs from midair, you know, but our programs are informed by industry, by stakeholders who are part of this whole game here. I mean, we liaise with them. We ensure that we meet and we discuss what is happening, um, the, the, the quality of graduates we are putting out there, are they meeting your mark and your standards, what else do you need to see, um, what values you want to be inculcated in these students. And so we have that discussion with um, the wider society, with our stakeholders, just to ensure that what we're doing here is meeting uh, quality control and is meeting standards. So when you look at these programs that we are offering, um, they are informed, of course. There are programs that are trending, programs that are relevant to national development. I spoke about social work, um, criminal justice that is coming on stream, and we know what is happening here in Belize as it relates to crime and violence in our society. We, as a people, need to know how to address these issues. You know, yes, how to mitigate against um, criminal intents, what is happening um, 
in the minds of the criminal? Why is it that you chose this decision over, you know, becoming and being a, a positive and a change agent in society? So we have these kinds of discussions and we see that there is a need for programs like these. And so that is what we do to ensure that we are meeting the needs of the country in order to uplift Belize and to develop and enrich our economy, you know. We want to talk about all of these new initiatives, the projects that are ongoing, so that we can really, you know, make education more holistic. And it's not just about books. I'm just so excited. I can't wait to get our other people on board. We're going to have episodes where we're talking with faculty. We're going to have our wellness center. And I won't get into that because we have another show with that. But there's just so many things going on. And I think that's the hallmark there, that you want to be a part of a progressive university. And so, ladies, it's always a pleasure. Is there anything you guys want to... I know you, you touched on holistic development. Um, I know there are other episodes coming up after this, so we don't want to let out too much at this time. But of course, there, there is a variety of out-of-the-classroom experience here. Yes, we talk about admissions and, and, you know, how to enter the university and ensuring that you are academically qualified and so forth. But when you get here, we have several different co-curricular activities to help you develop that, your out-of-class skills, for example, your interpersonal skills, your leadership skills, you know, budgeting, self-controlled, you know, having the right mindset and these things. And so those come in the forms of clubs and societies and student life experience. So we have different clubs here, the debating club, the travel club, photographic club, and and don't give too much away. Okay, okay. Well, I'll try to limit, limit that. But we want you to know that it's not just about your, your academics. That's very important. Important, rather, that's the purpose why you came here. But we also have to be mindful of the fact that when you go out into the world of work, the employers want to see that balance. They want to see the skill sets that you are coming with. And so after brandishing your lovely 3.0 GPA and your, your cum laude. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, yes, all of those nice things. Congratulations, it's very good. But they also want to see that, yeah, I know how to work in a group. I know how to work, you know, together with someone else. Teamwork. You know, I know how to, to express myself well. I know how to manage. I know how to lead. I know how to do all the different things that were caught and not necessarily taught in the classroom. So, yeah. So we need to strike that balance. So know that when you come here, it's a lot of hard work. So you can have or you can obtain your degree, earn your degree. But at the same time, know that hard work and no play makes Jack a dull boy <laughs> and makes Jill a dull girl. So we balance it here. And that's what you'll hear about later on in that student life. <laughs> right, right, you know. I want to big up my people yeah. that we have. This is an initiative, a project that I'm leading, yes, but it would not be possible. Right. We have some engineers, yeah. we have videographers yeah. with us, people who love graphic design, exactly. who we're coming together, you know, we're exactly. making the, the, the video intro. Mm -hmm. It is a, an amazing experience that I think exactly. everybody should be a part of. And they can add it to their resume. Right. And it's exactly. a part of your resume. Exactly. Come on. So the opportunities are limitless. Mm -hmm. I mean, we haven't even spoken about study abroad. We talk about student advising mm -hmm. and yes. the one-to-one. -one. Tutoring. It's still, yeah, on all of these beautiful things, yeah. they're yeah. taking place, guess where? Yeah, at, yeah. at the University the of Belize. Be. <laughs> Fair, you want to close off with anything? Oh, unfortunately, <laughs> I came in when... I came in... In... 2020 so at that point that was like covid oh yeah so i i started and did my entire degree online and unfortunately wow. uh i never experienced the uv experience yeah. as a student but now uh, post covid i am starting i'm joining everything mm -hmm. i'm going to every event because mm -hmm. i want to experience of those course. things. of course and the events i mean mm -hmm. campus life is booming it is
uh, um, dance. I, there was a there was a dance the other night. I was like, and I heard the music all the way from my house. I was like, okay, I hope they're enjoying themselves. But you know, there's a lot to look forward here. I'm glad that we can be a part of the rebuilding of um, student life on campus post COVID because it's a great time to be a student. You know, to meet new people. You know, and to participate in so many extracurricular activities that we have. So I want to end up on a note tonight. <laughs> I want to say that I want you guys to look out for our episodes that are coming. We have so many good things. I'm so excited and I pray that I'm able to just sustain myself through it all so that we can really en engage our audience and we really want to, you know, reach our communities to say that this is the National University and it's one that we all must be extremely proud of. Mm -hmm. um, tonight couldn't be possible, this entire initiative couldn't be possible without the support of our president mm -hmm. and our vice president. We have to say big up to them. Man, it's just a blessing when you're working with a, a solid, yes. supportive team because, you know, without that, nothing really happens. And so big up our president, our vice president. We appreciate you guys. And on that note, we want to say, don't forget to join the journey here at the University of Belize. Until next time, guys. <laughs>